This podcast is also sponsored by Four Gears Marketing Agency. Whether you're seeking to establish a better online presence, increase your sales, or connect with your audience in a more meaningful way, partner with Four Gears today, reach out to them, and see how they can take your brand or business to the next level. How's it going, people? Welcome back to another episode of the Here's the Crack podcast. Uh, it's just the three of us today, for those listening or watching. Uh, we're doing another monthly recap. So basically on the podcast this month, what what can you expect? Well, if you look back, we, we interviewed Peter from Nomadic Watches, a really good podcast, basically a watch brand, luxury watch brand built from scratch, born and bred in Belfast, which is awesome. What are you laughing at? Nothing. Exactly. Um, we, also, uh, we also interviewed Gary Rutherford from Arc Fitness, which was probably one of my favorite podcasts today. Yeah. Um, really good podcast, really insightful and lots of information on there. So definitely go back and give that a listen. And then last week's episode, we chatted to Andrew Ryan and Connor Brennan, uh, both Q Radio, and at the time of recording this, they will be fighting. When this goes uh, out, it's not the Wednesday. Yeah, this yeah. goes out on Thursday, Wednesday. so they fought last over. night. We'll know who won. We'll know who. We'll know who dominated. Um, I, two Quick of guess. the least aggressive boxing Quick people I've ever won. met I in my think life. Connor easily wins. Though. Do you? I think mm. Connor's put more effort into it by the looks of it. Just from the sounds of that, if you listen to the podcast, you'll get a feel for it. Like they're pretty intense training. Yeah, yeah. They're taking it seriously. You know. Purple, but they don't seem like they want to. There's no beef. Like I think it would probably be the most I mean? entertaining in terms of like the production of it. And, like they were talking about the ring walkouts and all. So yeah. it'll be good if you're watching it. That then go and listen to our podcast because it's really good. Yeah, so tune into that. Definitely. But look, um, we've interviewed a lot of cool people, uh, business people, uh, and and everything. So like, please, this month's podcast, I actually think have been pretty. Everyone has banged. It just gets really better good. every month. Like how do how do we do it? You know what I do? Mean? How do we number keep one podcast in Northern Ireland? What are we saying? How do we keep, we keep coming nothing. back and just yeah. presenting every time? But hey, here, here's the crack. Here's you know what I mean. The, when people ask where's the crack, it's fucking it's here. here. Um, but yes, please go back, give them all a listen, and share them, please. Uh, so basically, that's enough about what's been happening on the podcast this month. What's been happening in our lives this month? Well, you part in the sea. Last <laughs> month, what's going on? Last there? month on our monthly recap. We talked about Vegas. It was looming around the corner. It was it was tickling us in the back of the neck. We were ready to go and now we're back. We've made it. You're probably thinking you if okay? you're wa- you're probably thinking if you're watching this right now, there's three tan boys. No wonder. It was forty four degrees. Hot stuff. Like the boys in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're back from Vegas. Yeah. Tommy Stag. Unbelievable. The first of many. Unbelievable. By JK, <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> how was it? How did you as the oh, stag? How did so you... good? Like, how good was it? Unreal, yeah. just another world over there. That's mad. Like, but speaking of ones and work about it, it's just like I just kept saying it's another world over there because, like, it is this you're just entertained the whole time. Mm. That's you know, this is what I found hard explaining to you whenever you are asking me all the time, Oh, what's it like? What's it like? You can't really no. put it into words, no. like, it's quite difficult. What shocked you the most about it? It's just like you're entertained all the time. Just like you're constantly. never, I think it's someone who gets bored so easily. Like you're never without something to do. Yeah. Like you're walking through the hotel, and you're any hotel, and you're like, oh, I could sit down and play a bit of real lad here. Yeah. Could stop at the shop and get a beer and just drink it anywhere. And the accessibility like, of everything oh. is mental too. And then Avering's like, it's literally like Avering's walking distance. Like yeah. it's, it's not much different than Belfast, really. Like in terms of size. All right, <laughs> that you're gonna say no, but like I just mean like you, it's one of those cities. Yeah, it's not big. that you can just walk everywhere. Like there was only a few, a few places we went where we got an Uber, but in terms of like, you don't really have to stray that far out. No, really. No, but yeah, what all did we do? Okay. Martin Yarks in Omnia and Caesars, unreal. Like the nightclubs, and nice. just yeah. different. Just, just nothing like it here. Yeah. Or I'd be surprised if there's anything like it in London or. Yeah. Just another level, and then just entertainment, unreal. And just every night too, proper big DJs. Like, yeah, like but even during the day, constantly. Like, like you can go to a nightclub and see like the likes of Diplo, Martin Yarks, all the big DJs, big mainstream DJs anyway. And then if you want to go out during the day, they're doing pool parties. Yeah. Like, but it was forty-four degrees, so no thanks. Too hot. Very hot. Easy burnt. What did you think? Mod, yeah, no, really, really good. Well, how did it compare to like when you and Eve went over to when we went over? It was similar enough. Um, I suppose we we'd probably done a lot more gambling whenever we went. Like compared to me and Eva, we just wouldn't have been. 
not saying that we were taking it serious whenever we were there, but it was yeah. a lot more fucking intense whenever we were there because we were losing a lot more money and yeah, bigger oh amounts and shit. God. Yeah. Whenever it was me and Aoife, we were just putting like dollars in the machines and stuff and sort of doing that. But like there was bigger losses whenever we went. And that was one of the questions I wanted to ask. There was a lot more of testosterone in everyone. Like, <laughs> sort of like, Jesus you know, like <laughs> pu- pushing you on, you're like fucking like hit that black sort of thing. Like, you know, yeah. waiting for the spin to come in. When like. everyone was sitting down playing or that and one person was standing, you're like, you're not playing. You have to perform. What are you like? doing? You have to perform. <laughs> yeah. You're a pussy. Peer pressure. Like. Um, but yeah, one of the questions I had down was, does the house always win? I think it does. Always. The longer you play, the more likely the house is to win. Like. It's so I hard to off, walk away. Yeah. I started off the first night. I done good. La. I think I brought 200 quid out, got our food and all, came home with 210. It's like happy days. Same, yeah, yeah. same strat next night. That didn't happen the next night. La. Yeah. But that was me the second night, I think. I had a real bad first night. Yeah. I was playing blackjack. I was playing on the machines as well because, like, you're talking $25 minimum bets in the mm. hotels you were in anyway. I think the f- machines are fixed. I think that black you seen the blackjack yeah. stuff that was going on yeah. when I was playing. It was tough to take. Can't lie. I thought it was hard. I thought it was harder to win. I didn't really play much blackjack over there, but I thought whenever we were in Manchester, at those tables they were a lot easier to win than in Vegas. Anytime you play blackjack on the machine, so mm. I'm sort of led to believe the machines are quite rigged. Like you know, I never got on a roll with blackjack. Whereas when I started playing roulette and doing the thing you were saying today, yeah. Like it, it made sense and like Because at the start I was like Oh I don't really know where you're at But mm. then I think when you actually sit down And do that But then I think you need to do something similar to blackjack So basically what we were doing was like If you win You put the same bet on But then if you lose Like you double You increase your bet By like the same amount every time Yeah we were doing So then when you win bets. You're basically making your money back So like you put down $10 If you won you keep betting $10 Whereas if you lost You'd bet 20 then go to 30 and go to 40. Yeah. Sounds mod, but like when you actually win, but then when you're losing, it's not good. No, it gets high. I think <laughs> well, that, there was one night I think you got a bit carried away. You were like, fuck. <laughs> I, but you don't realize too, because you only think like, oh, I've only lost $20 if you do a $20 bet. Because it, obviously it was $5 bet, so it was like 5, 10, 15, 20. And after that, you start losing money if you're only doubling. Yeah. I know, so you have to start doubling. So you have to go nearly 20, 40, 60. To actually make money back. So I was doing that specifically one night rather than just going up by five each time. Yeah. And then that night I was like five, lost, 10, lost, 20. No, 15, lost, 20, lost, 30, lost. And then it was in the 40, 40, lost. And I was like, I have to go big here. I had 75 <laughs> in the machine and goes 75, bang. But then I was sitting thinking, oh, I've only lost 75. But you haven't only lost 75, yeah. you nearly lost $200 because mm. of the bets before. Like. So you put the, it's a dangerous game. You like. put the money in the machine, and when it's in the machine, it's like, oh, you just forget about it. That's, and then you're back in the pocket, and you're like, oh, I've only spent $100. Yeah, so. There was one night I was up 300 and then I didn't leave for that. So the last night I was just like fucking throwing it in. Because you're like, last night, you sort of have it in your head, oh, I brought this money with me, I was going to spend it anyway. And then you're sort of like, probably could have. Went to the bureau to change. change you, yeah, I suppose it's the effort to go on. Like you'd rather just step in. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Ran, came away with money on. Yeah, he didn't sensible thing and actually played a game that there was more of a chance of winning it. So yeah, I think if it was to go back, I'd want to try poker. Like yeah. I don't, I wouldn't, have, wouldn't have been confident enough to play. But then I think from what if he you was sat down, I think and you got into it, you probably would be fine. Though. But I suppose, like I think we've only ever experienced him playing it in Manchester, and it's probably more of a niche. Like going, if you want to go to a club, like a uh, night. Like, what do you call it a casino in manchester you're going there because you know how to play poker whereas in vegas there's people who are there people just go to vegas for the laugh yeah so they're going to get steaming and be like fuck it let's go play poker like probably absolutely crap at playing poker so the likelihood is you're probably going to get playing people in vegas that aren't really that good yeah. and you have a better chance of winning against them so if you've a, if you're sort of half decent at it like you're probably more likely to win money there. Because even he was saying, like, there was people there that were trash. Huh? Yeah, yeah. What you He's think? never said that about, like, Manchester or anything, though. No. I thought it was good. It was good. It was a good time. There was lots going on, I agree with. I agree with Tommy. If you're a person who's, like, easily, like, uh, you struggle to be entertained, Ooh. it's a good place to go. Mm-hmm. Like that was one of the things that we definitely considered when planning yeah. your when planning your stag. Mm. Like 
you get bored really easily you get like fidgety really easily and we were like we're just gonna have to keep him you're kind of like a child we need to constantly keep you entertained mm. so to go to vegas was like the like it was the best option yeah and obviously like i i've never been in america before neither of you so i think me and you were going and like i think there was that excitement specifically between me and you where it was like what what's this going to be like and then i think whenever you landed especially the first thing i hit you was the 44 degrees you were like standing in the middle of the car park in vegas like this multi-story and you're like holy moly like this is actually the heat and then i think like one of the highlights for me was probably the night like omnia like omnia was sick like just going to see martin garrix like and that side of things was sick the gun range was good crack like mm. honestly if you go to vegas go to the gun range like it was you'll never see proper like america <laughs> until you go there like yeah, this even guy's the guys shooting work, a minigun the guys working on the gun range are exactly how you'd imagine yeah. someone who works on a gun range to be like just big american dudes and yeah. like daphne and the army or something like i, stage, I like, have this like, video on my phone of a guy shooting a minigun and it is like it's unreal. You just say hey, three, two, one, minigun, <laughs> and then just this, and you're just standing there going, "This is insane." Yeah. Even like dry, even walking around, like you could literally spend a full day just walking around all the yeah. hotels, seeing everything. Like, and I agree with you. Like, you just walk through one hotel, and there's just like something to look at or do. You walk into the next hotel, especially if you haven't been there before. But like the amount of food places as well is unreal. Food's good. Honestly, I would definitely recommend anybody, even if you're not a big gambler, mm. go like because it's definitely one of them bucket list yeah. places you need to go. I take bro. I like I'd like to go back and even just go to a couple of shows and stuff. But still, I still think I'd want to do a bit of gambling and all. But yeah. I think if I was to go back, I'd be the same as you. I'd love to go back. Listen, I'd love to go and see like the Hoover Dam and like the bit and like the. Like, uh, like go actually and go and do s- something like we went to the gun range grand we canyon. did a couple like the grand canyon and all like i wouldn't mind going out a few day trips because yeah. i think like when you're when you're flying into vegas and you look out and you see like the actual desert you're like holy good god there's some amount of stuff out there and yeah i know they do like dune buggy and all up through the desert which i think would be sick yeah. but, like we just didn't have the like we didn't have the time yeah like even the heat we filled bit- every day it would um, be hot going out there to the desert yeah. for a day. Like. The one thing that I will say is, like, we are spoiled over here in terms of, like, you go into a shop, like, you went into the shop before this and bought that can of monster that mm-hmm. you're currently holding in your hand, and you were probably like, like, what is it, one, one fifty five? Yeah. And you probably paid one fifty five for that. Yeah. But, like, if you go into like a place in like Vegas, even like one of the, it's it's, it's like right. Game. Oh, I'm gonna buy this drink for three dollars and fifty. And they don't even and put the price on a lot of things. And then they'll look at you and they'll go, "That's yeah. six dollars ten And you're like, "The math ain't math in here." The water, um, the cheapest bottle of water, you can get six dollars. Mad, crazy. Like, and they don't even put the tax on it. Like, you have to, you don't get that till the till. But then the big shops are cool. Like the actual, like the the sort of normal shops. Like, we definitely recommend if you're, you're going over, go into one of them. Like, um. But yeah, it was unreal. It's just like over, uh, like, you can't even compare it to anything, really. Yeah. No. Like it's just mental. Yeah. It's just a playground, like, for people to fucking piss <sighs> about, like. So, yeah. Tipping, what do you think of that? Huh? Tipping. Service, tipping. don't know. I think there's people, I I still think it's the way it should be over here. Like, I, I, like, I, I think gr- we should tip? No, I think, like, it should be, if you get good service, you tip. But I don't think yeah. it should. Like, yeah. I, I understand why it is the way it is in terms of, like, people are paid shit wages and you need to tip, basically. But I just, like, there was a couple of times where you just got absolutely shit service and you were like, mm-hmm. we're tipping you, whatever. Like, we were, like, say a meal with the four of us was, like, $100 or whatever. Like, you're getting, like, a $20, $25 tip or whatever. And, and they're probably serving like even five that, tables at a time. Like, the first night we went to that Outback Steakhouse and your woman was lovely. She, she was actually probably brilliant. one of the best ones that served us. But, like, that breakfast place. Uh, like, we the next morning, we were waiting yeah. ages for our food. Your boy was sort of wandering about. And then you're, like, tipping on. Yeah, what she he probably got twenty, thirty dollars off us as well. What was the real bad one we had? Top golf. Oh, he was, he was bad. Golf, oh yeah. my god, he was just it's looking mod- for his tip. Like. Yeah, but it was mod seeing like how horny they are for tips. Like, yeah. so we basically were up like a top golf is basically like a big driving range, and there's like a pool and all proper on rail setup. So we were in the pool and like chilling all day, and then we were at the bar just get going up and getting drinks. But then when you go down to the bay. 
you're basically allocated a server who brings you your drinks or food or whatever you're getting. So, like, we'd order, like, a pitcher or a beer, and one of the boys was bringing it down. And as he was bringing it down, the server's running over, and he's like, oh, what are you doing? Like, I'll get that for you and all. And you're like... He's like, no, yeah. taking over the that's, situation. that's my job. That's but my you job. didn't see him until it became the, like, oh, he's playing for another hour. Yeah, he's, he's going to pay me another $80 here. So yeah. And, like, he wanted to get hour. food, and you actually had to, like, wave him over. And there was yeah. stuff like that, and then you're paying... Like, the, his tip would have been crazy, like... Yeah, I think he got a $100, like, off. And there's no that. way they get the people remember. working on Top Golf for getting shit wages, though. Like, yeah. they wouldn't be oh, they can't be, like. The thing, the... The the other one was as well, which I thought was quite funny, was the which I understood though was the one. Remember, was it the third day we just were sitting in our hotel downstairs having drinks, and the guy was like clocking off, and another guy was clocking yeah. on. He was coming over, and he was like, "Just want to come over to say I'm clocking off. Like you, your server will be Jason here. Um, can I get you anything else? Are we all like sort of good?" And it was like, "Yeah, no, no, we're good, we're good." And he was like, "Okay, well." I'm going to be leaving now, so, like, you're going to... And it was just kind of like him going, like, can we us? settle this bill no, but he did so say. I can get paid? He was paid, like, oh, we're settling never... the bills. He's like, I'm going to have to settle this bill because I'm leaving. That's uh, ridiculous. Like, but, it's like, ma- but, like, us, it's just mental. Like, that side of it, to me, was, like... Like, you ha- and over here, you don't really think about it. Like, you have whoever comes down and waits your table and, like, someone different could bring down the food or whatever. It's not a big deal. Whereas over there, it's, like... They are your yeah. server for the day or the, whenever you're there. Yeah. For. If you're in a bar over here and you're sitting down having your drinks, the next thing you're maybe two, three rounds in and you, you get a tab set up and the turnaround he goes, Right, you have to pay now. I'm leaving here. Like, you'd be like, What the fuck? I, I yeah. don't like tabs. No, I hate I, I, I Because, like, like, even in that sense, like, it came yeah. down to the table and then you're sitting there and you're like, Especially when there's four, if it like, it'd be different if you and Bruno or like me and Lucinda or you and Aoife were going where it'd be like, mm. Right, it comes down at $60. It's like, Right, okay, we'll pay the $60 plus the tip. Yeah. But, like, when you're trying to like split it in between the four people and yeah. like we're all paying individually and all, it's like, and everyone's not drinking the same amount. Yeah, and it's like one of them things where, like, looking back on it now, it's just like, no one should have, like, no one was really taking the piss anyway. Just like, there's like, yeah. like a good 20 minutes crack on. of organising oh, the bill. Yeah. At the yeah. End. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not just like... And then when you've had, like, six or seven pints, you're standing trying to do quick mass. Like, <laughs> just on the side you're like, you're like, yeah, like about take, this, take, take, take this it. honestly, please. Take it. But um, no, it was good overall. We made it back. Not long to the wedding now. Oh no! What's the? I know we're not really focusing on the wedding in this podcast. We'll maybe talk a little bit about it next month because it'll be, it'll be around the corner. It'll be Looming. tickling you in the what back of the neck. That one, like. Yeah. But um, how are you feeling now? A month and a bit. <sighs> Organizing a wedding is not enjoyable. Though. It's just not like feeling more real. It's not good. <laughs> it's not fun. Though. Like I. I'm looking forward to the day and I know the day and all will be good, but like it's just not enjoyable at all. The lead up to it, like I don't like if anyone says it's good, it's not. Yeah. Like you're basically like it's all you like you come home from work. What you're talking about me and Bruno were talking about this the other night. I was like, I can't wait to come home from work and just have nothing. Mm. Like Relax. you forget what it's like because it's always like in the back of your head. Oh, was this done? Was this done? Do we need to do this? Like, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, even when you're not doing, you're thinking. That's yeah. one thing I notice, and you'll not notice this until after your wedding's over. But like, you see, once that final payment goes out, it's like this, like it's like an elastic band snaps, and you're just like, oh my gosh, so much tension has been released. <laughs> and then even when you're on honeymoon, like we slept for like twelve hours that day, Holly, because we had nothing else to worry about. Like, yeah. Should have, you should have just booked two fucking nights in Dublin Hotel Airport or something before you went. Uh, we Get did, the rest we, yeah. <laughs> like, like flip, it was like you'll not notice it until. But like I agree with you, like, and you'll not. It'll almost feel weird afterwards because you'll not know any different the past year and a half that you've been planning the wedding. Yeah, I think it's because it's so long. Because like you go through this stage of like you get engaged and it's exciting and everyone's happy and you have a party and you go out and celebrate and all, and then it's like. You go around and you view the venues and you're like going around all these nice hotels and it's class and everyone's like giving you all the best service and all and then you book it. And then there's about, a, it depends when you get engaged obviously, but then there's about a year of like, uh, you, you can't really do anything. So like yeah. you'll book some stuff, but then it's like, you don't really speak to those people and it's sort of done. And then it gets to the stage now that I'll, a few months leading up to it and it's like, everything needs done in the space. Because you can't, 
you send out your invitations and you're waiting to hear back from people and then you, you have to give the hotel the final numbers and then you're allocating rooms and you can't do that till the invitations are gone out and then you're hearing back from people and then suits rings all that shit and then you've got like all the other stuff like you contact suppliers and they're like oh yeah we'll just reach out to you like two weeks before the wedding and you're like yeah. i hate that i'm like no <laughs> i just want to pay you now just, i, I just, want to give you my money do you know what i mean though yeah. like, to be fair though i'm not I, shit i don't want to shit on weddings but like honestly to be fair if you're getting married it's not fun get a wedding planner it's not fun me and shay made it? your sit fittings pretty simple and i know but that's so forward like like all that was grand we just walked in walked into the changing rooms they came out and they went there but i have another i have to get another fucking f- five six suits fuck how many what, for, oh, her dad uh, I heard that thrown in the question. Yeah, so <laughs> I was laughing. There you go. Right. <laughs> Shaking the fucking seat. I, can't, I can't wait it. for the day just to be actually enjoy it and like that's yeah. it yeah. and like celebrate. Yeah. 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 So yeah, sorry to be depressing, but that's just. The thing. <laughs> yeah. But you're looking forward to the day. No, I know the day. Totally be, I just, I'm just want to get like to the day. I yeah. just want to get to it and like enjoy it, and I then s- I'm excited for like we're doing two days. Like I think. If you're getting married, I know I haven't experienced it yet, but like definitely book a second day because you're going to get married and it's just going to be, I don't know, maybe you can speak on that one. We never had a second day. Um, Would you have liked it on one now, looking back? No. 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 I'd like, see once the day's over, Mm. see once that night's over, you're done. Yeah. yeah. Me and Lucinda, me and Lucinda woke up the next day, like apart from really pulling down the, like taking some stuff back to mum and dad, like that. her mum and dad's taking do, some yeah, stuff yeah. back to our house. Like we were just kind of like, like we were going on honeymoon the next day. Yeah. So we were like straight home. We'd already been packed, but like the time we got home, like we just, like we got a takeaway, just sort of like, like it was nice to have the day just us two. Yeah. Um. And then we had the honeymoon obviously, but like, I, I don't know. I, ca- I, I never had a second day. So like, mm. I, like, I'll be honest, when I look back at it now, I'm like, I'm excited for yours. I'm, I'm actually... More excited for his than your own. I'm excited. Don't you're gonna say? No, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually excited. Not more excited for your second day than your actual wedding day. I'm just excited to like because I think it'll be very chill and. That's why I wanted to do because like I want us, me and her, to actually like because I think I know we'll enjoy the wedding, but like I just want a day where it's like right, it's done. You can mm-hmm. actually sit, chill out, have a few drinks and all, and like yeah. chat to people because that's the one thing like people said to me. Like obviously got married, they're like, don't like go on your honeymoon straight after or like just like not like see your family or friends because like you'll come back from the wet you'll go on your honeymoon straight after your wedding not speak to anyone and then you come back and like you've sort of missed the buzz after your whole wedding because yeah. like everyone's like t- t- well, like the day like after home. we all sat and had breakfast for uh, for my one and then i think we like you all went back to my mom and dad's house and we were sitting chatting and all and it was good and then i remember going i remember going back like for a little while to lucinda's house and all her family was over and then we went back to the house obviously to get ready to go the next day on honeymoon but like you just kind of feed off that buzz and then it's like right cool but you'll enjoy your fur you'll enjoy the actual day like it'll be good but Arn, i can see Arn, who is due to be married and is it may next year Arn, your win is you're sweating hey you're sort of like ugh, how do you feel stressed out how do I feel? How do you feel given what I've just said? Because I feel like you're at the stage where like it's awkward because you've got engaged and celebrated like a couple of months ago and now it's like a year of you can't really do much. So. Yeah, like I'm in that period that you're talking where you're sort of just sitting doing nothing. Like I've got everything booked. Like everything I can possibly book yeah. is booked. Do you feel like you're missing something? Like for you at the minute, like I, I think I asked you the same question, like, but now you're in that lull of like, you've secured your venue, secured your date, kind of organize what you can. Do you almost feel like you and Livy are sitting there like at nighttime and being like, are we forgetting something? Yeah, I feel like it's less of I'm forgetting something and more of I, I should be doing something. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I feel like there's a wedding happening. I should be doing something. <laughs> I need to do it. I need to do the wedding. Um. <laughs> But there's nothing to do. Yeah. Like, only like the dress has been bought. Oh. The. Uh, what color did you go red. for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a red one. Um, no, red like, for danger. So I need to buy my suits. Yeah. But it's May next year, so. I wouldn't be stressing. No, I'm gonna. When did you? When when did you two? I know this podcast has turned into like questions from Aaron, but like when did you two start doing the 
suits. <laughs> the suits is I sort of left the suits to like maybe a month or two ago. Like me and Bruno went in and I I just like priced because we're renting our suits because they're so they're just toxes really. So like most people aren't really going to wear it again. So we, I just went in and tried it on, re- like got a price and rent, rented them. And then the two of them only got measured up there last week, which is like, what, eight weeks before the wedding? Because like all that stuff, like the suits, like a suit's a suit. Like it's not that much. Like your boys aren't going to really, like people will lose weight and put on weight or whatever. But like no one's going to, like there, there's not going to be a drastic change to the suit. It's either you go down a size, you go up at a size. Whereas like it's different with women because of the dresses. Like they're actually tailored and t- if you know what I mean like they're actually like stitching it and doing all that shit so like that stuff's more important but like I don't yeah. know I'd say like 8 weeks 10 weeks well I, 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 I was a wee even. I was a bit different because we priced to get we knew what sort of suits we wanted and then I priced to get them rent it but by the time I'd like added on bits I then went to like a local place and they were doing like an offer for like a Rima Sumo suit and I was like they're really good suits and that we were working out like an extra a hundred quid by the time I got everybody to like just buy the suits and I was like I'm just gonna buy them mm. and save myself the hassle I think I got used to down three months before the wedding just to get an initial like does this actually look what we want it to look like yeah. I think we got your initial fittings mm. and then I brought you back like two weeks before the wedding yeah. and got like the final fitting so like Shay went down like a full size and everything like you just you lost some amount of weight, but you didn't actually notice it until you put this you, you re put the suit yeah. back on again. And I remember going, They've give him like the wrong size and then your boy came out and went, You've lost weight and Shay was like, I've lost like how much do you lose? Bit of stone. He lost like yeah. Like, I don't know, you must just not have it. Um but like <laughs> Um, so like Shay's suit <laughs> changed Shay's suit changed quite like not dr- say dramatically but like Shay's suit like if you'd have rocked up to my wedding in the original suit you would have looked fine but like yeah. it, you, you would have noticed it was a bit baggy here and baggy there but like I think you's, I brought you down like 9 12 weeks before the wedding mm. and then brought you back like 2 weeks before like you don't need to men are simple like I mean I think what you're saying is like pretty, pretty much what I've said is like you feel like you should do more or you have to do more but honestly like you, there's nothing you can do Bar even thing. stuff like the honeymoon you can't really book it to like a year before if even so like that stuff like we only booked our honeymoon maybe five months ago do you know what i mean so yeah, i'm actually no, that's actually something i'm doing now is i'm actually now looking at the honeymoon that's one thing i wish i'd done earlier like i'd do that earlier and get a paid off because there was like three months there we we're paying that off, like, so yeah, yeah. But where, where are you going on the honeymoon? Uh, Crete. Ooh, yeah, very nice. Very and nice. go all out in your honeymoon, like, like spend a fortune. Like you'll not regret don't, that. Anyone I've spoke to who's got married is like, don't like budget on your honeymoon because you're only gonna do it once. No skimping. Like get a fucking credit card out if you want. <laughs> like honestly, like, get like, yourself in lots of fucking debt. But, Do like, it. honestly, like, I was speaking to one guy, and, like, I, I was back when we were on about going to, like, we were talking about going to Miami, or not Miami, Florida, and going to Disneyland, and then going to Mexico, and that's what he done. And he was like, definitely, like, don't scrimp on your honeymoon. Like, go all out, because you'll never do it again. And you hear about people going, oh, we're going to just go on our honeymoon in a couple of the months, and then they end up having kids and shit, and it's like, you did, did never want their honeymoon. The thing is that I would say about that, like, obviously within your within your means i suppose but like the one thing i like we don't regret spending a pile because now whenever we look back at it like whenever we're even planning holidays now that will always be special to us if that makes sense because we went all out and yeah like uh, it's definitely worth it 100 percent. and it's probably the one thing that you'll pay big money for that you're not entertaining everybody else in the world you're actually going and entertaining yourself like you're spending that money on yourself whereas like i would argue for a wedding it's just basically it's your day but you're organizing it for other people Mm. so just try and make it as enjoyable as possible i suppose treat yourself Um, i think we should wrap it up but yeah wrap it up there a lot of wedding talk stag talk Ooh, it's good to check in with I'm everybody. I'm be back with more guest episodes, so enjoy the next month or so, and then we'll come back, reassess the wedding situation.
Tommy will be like, it's happen? not on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, before this, the next me- the next recap will be two weeks before your wedding. Yeah. Will it? Yeah. <sighs> I know we were all oh, sitting, we were no. all sitting having coffee at Shay's house the other day, and what was it? Aoife was like sixteen weeks, and Tommy was like, "It's actually eight. and everybody <laughs> was like, "What?" Even I was a bit it taken back. So it? It's just he was like, like, "Oh, it must be sixteen weeks or so now, is it?" And me and everyone were like, "No, it's eight. So whenever you put them weeks, I think two months sounds longer than yeah. eight weeks. Like, yeah. See, only I, I knew because obviously I'm getting married. Like, like the way Vegas fell and all, and like when I came back, I was like, "Right, look, it's crunch time now." Right? But <laughs> Tommy was like, "No." If it's actually eight weeks, six days, and thirteen hours and fifty-four <laughs> minutes, uh, yeah, but Get it no, right. Good to check in with everybody again. Please, if you can, some great podcast that we recorded this month. Uh, please go back and give them a give them a view or give them a listen. Please share the podcast with your friends and family. Give us a rating on Apple po- Apple Podcast and Spotify. Yeah, um, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. All that stuff, please, so, very much helps and. We'll see you in the next one. Good luck.